you grinded tape on all the top quarterback prospects. Yep. Uh, give me your thought on what you have seen. I don't. Uh, we're going to work to the final answer here. Which quarterback jumped off the tape to you as the guy who can be most successful in the NFL in this year's draft? Greg well, Cosell. I think what's most fascinating, Rich, this year is I think they're all really different. So very much it's going to be in the eye of the beholder. I mean, I think that you were at the Combine, obviously. I, we missed each other, but, mm. uh, you know, we all saw what Anthony Richardson did. And I think a, a lot of people are going to look at that and, and disregard a lot of the tape. And it'll be interesting to see if that happens. It would not surprise me if someone felt Anthony Richardson was the first pick in a draft. Um, the biggest issue he has, number one, he hasn't played a lot of football. Number two, he struggles to control the ball. And by that, I mean his ball placement is really poor. And if you can't control the ball, you can be really good at every other thing if, uh, involving quarterback play. But it's really hard to be a, a, a high-level quarterback in the NFL if you can't control the ball. And he's going to have to get better at that. Now, obviously, he threw it well at the combine. Uh, people can take from that whatever they want. Um, but there's no question his size, his arm strength, his ability to run, those are, are things that will get people excited. And they should. Um, but we'll see. As I said, it would not surprise me just based on the size and his ability to make special plays, which we've now come to believe many have anyway, that that's more important than making the routine plays. Now, you know, uh, Greg, of course, there's many coaches that could hear that evaluation and have a similar evaluation and say, we'll take care of the ball placement. We'll take care of that protection. We can coach that up. We can, right. get, we can, we, we can clean all those things up. So um, you, you just checked a Richardson box. Um, what about the other kids that, again, who's most pro-ready that you, that you would look at at well, the tape and say, this is the kid that could be number one overall, or at least is in your book, Greg? Um, I mean, I, I just from a tape perspective, yes. and, I, and I've met him briefly, um, but C.J. Stroud, to me, you talk about controlling the ball. His his ball placement is, for the most part, pristine. Um, and I think that you're dealing with a kid who's a natural touch thrower. We That term is overused, but in the case of Stroud, it applies. He can do something that not a lot of young quarterbacks can do. He can throw with pace and touch. He can layer the ball. He can feather the ball. He can make every kind of throw. The key thing is to be able to control the ball and to make the right kind of throw to the right receiver at the right time. That's what you're trying to do. And as I said, we've gotten lost in, in the fact that routine throws don't seem to be considered as important in the minds of many as the special plays. And I think one of the things about C.J. Stroud is he makes all the necessary throws. Um, and he does have much better pocket movement than he was given credit for, and not just the Georgia game. You know, I watched his 2021 tape, Rich. I watched his 2022 tape. He does have pocket movement. Is he a great athlete? No. But you don't have to be a great athlete, and you don't necessarily have to run around. You just have to be able to avoid and find a more quiet place to throw the football. Uh, he can do that, um, and he's such an easy thrower. And the thing I like about him is he's shown a willingness to be aggressive throwing the football, and uh, versus man coverage in particular, and you need to do that in the National Football League. Your grinding of the tape, Greg Cosell of Bryce Young, has shown you what? Right ahead. Bryce Young is a really fun player to watch. Um, his spatial awareness is outstanding. It, it's very similar to Mahomes in that regard. What, Just, do you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by spatial the, awareness? The natural feel of where people are in relation to you, of where people are down the field, of where people are all over the field. He just has a, a, a sort of an innate sense of where people are in relation to himself, mm -hmm. um, and that's spatial awareness. And his vision is outstanding, both in the pocket and on the move. Um, so when he moves, he sees things with great clarity, and therefore he can make really good, clean throws on the move. Uh, the question that will be discussed, and I know it's probably been talked about by you mm -hmm. and many others, but it will be discussed, is his size, not the height. I think we've come to accept that you can 
can play quarterback in this league, Rich, if you're not 6'4". We've come to accept that, and we've seen a lot of players who are able to do that mm-hmm. at a relatively high level. I think it's going to be more the frame than, than the height, mm-hmm. and that will be a discussion. Um, I I'm still not sure how I come down on that. But the kid is a phenomenal kid. I've gotten to know him. I guarantee he he blew away people with the interview process. I guarantee he'll do phenomenally well at his pro day. So you just have to decide how you feel about someone. I know he came in at 204. My guess is he probably played at 185 or 190 tops. So the question is, how do you feel about that at the NFL level? Why not? And that's, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm being honest. No, of course. I, I, I hear you, Greg. I, you know, and I was asking a whole bunch of people at the Combine and overheard some conversations as well, you know, about how few times you can't really even point to a play on tape or any play that he's ever had where you're like, yeah, his his height was a problem right there and that he has an ability to still be able to see the field, as you pointed yep. about spatial awareness and whatever. Is there any is there any moment you saw on tape where his size was a problem where where a, um, a hit you I, know knocked him off off kilter not, in a way that a bigger quarterback would not have been anything like that greg we made think a the note? only time you notice that because he does not have a big arm okay i mean he, you know he certainly doesn't have a weak arm but he doesn't have a big power arm yeah is the only time you do notice that is if the pocket does get squeezed and he can't leave the pocket yeah and at times he would just have to throw the ball and it wouldn't come out with a lot of juice on it a lot of velocity because he's not a big power thrower that's not his game um but those that doesn't happen very often. I wouldn't say that that's something that you're overly concerned about, but um, he just has a great natural feel for the position. Um, And, you know, that's obviously really important. Uh, And, you know, his movement, which is something we didn't talk about a lot after the 2021 season Mm -hmm. when he won the Heisman, became a much bigger factor this year with a lesser offensive line and lesser receivers, so he had to move more, and we saw the movement ability that he does have, and the awareness that he has when he does move and that's something he'll probably have to do at the nfl level catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free